Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian, and in this video we're going to be going over painting Fiora the Forsaken. And I'm going to be flipping the color scheme on this a little bit. Uh, one of the reasons why it took so long for me to try and do this is I had like a bit of a struggle. Uh, I wanted to paint this for the Riot Quest folks, and Fiora's color scheme from Riot Quest is very Menoth. It's got that creamy brown white color going on with like the red and magentas uh, for the cloth and uh, I'm not a super huge fan of the protectorate aesthetic so uh, I'm painting this Fiora 4 or Fiora the Forsaken as an infernal caster so I'm gonna have a lot more black armor going on here and you'll really just kind of see how it is that I paint my infernal so if you're super stuck on trying to work out how to do the uh, typical protectorate paint style you can leave a comment in the uh, in the section below here and uh, let me know that that's something that you would like to see done uh, it's not that i completely hate protectorate stuff it's just not my i don't know their their models just don't do it for me unless it's like the uh the reckoner chassis i think that's probably the coolest thing they've got but uh let's go ahead and get to the uh paint list that we're going to be using so here you'll see a list of all the paints that we're going to be using for this tutorial and I'll mention their names as they come up when I'm using them and uh, this will also be in the description of the video in case you want to reference it while you're watching but each company is listed out and each color as well. So I started Fiora out uh, with a base coat of black and then I think I maybe did like a highlight of some teal color I can't remember exactly what it was but I'm really gonna be covering that up it was just a, a test to kind of see if the thing if things would work the way I wanted them to uh, I started out with uh, a dark gray from scale 7 5's fantasy line and uh, I'm a sent this is really just like barely dark gray it's almost black but I've got a uh, Despair Green and In's Mouth Green on my palette here, and I'm really just kind of going for this super subtle black color. Oftentimes when people paint the color black, they end up putting highlights on that go a little too far up, and then everything that they paint that they would call black is really just some really dark other version of the highlight color they've got going on. So if I were to take this teal up too much, then I would just end up with a really dark teal model. And that's not what I'm wanting to go for with this. I think my Kador is painted like that, and I'm pretty happy with the way that looks because that's what I was intending to do. But with this, I want the armor to be black, and I don't want the highlights to be extreme. So the, if, you can, if you pay attention to my palette, you can see by the way the paint or the pigment is spidering out that this is watered down a lot. I think it's probably two to one, maybe three to one sometimes. Uh, especially with that despair green, it almost looks like it has an ink consistency to it, more so than it has a paint consistency. But essentially, I'm just kind of using the wet palette to get different variations of the mix of those three colors, and then I'm just uh, layering that highlight on there. I'm not doing any real wet blending or anything. I'm just kind of dragging the paintbrush along towards the highlights, and then sometimes I'll work it back and forth if the color isn't taking too well. This, uh, using the, the different shades or variations of the mixes along this palette allow me to control the layers that I put on there, and it gives me this nice subtle look for the highlights. It's not, we're not gonna be catching a ton of the teal in the reflections, but when you get to see light bounce off of it, you're gonna register that those highlights are maybe a little bit brighter than black, so don't get discouraged if you feel like when you're done with doing this that your highlights are just not really there. That's kind of what I'm shooting for with this one. So now I'm going to get to the base colors for her face. For this one, I started off with a one-to-one -one mix of Dirty Red and Deep Purple from AK Interactive. Now, uh, this paint goes on pretty decent. The pigmentation is pretty thick in it, but we're still kind of putting this over black. So I need to do this in a couple different layers. So we're just putting the, the mix down and then letting it dry up a little bit, and we'll come back for maybe two or three coats here. Now that we've let this dry, um, 
I guess it hasn't dried completely by the time I get to get here, so I've decided to take some Decay Black from Scale 75, their fantasy line. I just really like their fantasy line paints. Um, and uh, I'm going around and doing some panel lining, and this is really just me taking a small tip brush with some moderately thinned, maybe one-to-one -one Decay Black, and I'm going into the recesses of the armor plating and just drawing a smooth line. Uh, for this chest piece, it's pretty well recessed, so I'm almost painting that whole chest piece in the background black. And now I'm coming up to put in that final coat to make sure that we've got this really reddish, sinister look to her. So now we've got to start highlighting the face a little bit. And now I'm going to start working in some magenta from uh, AK Interactive. And uh, this is... The, the funny story about this stuff is I was at my not-so-local game store picking up some models that I needed for one of the battle reports we were doing, and uh, they were just putting out this new set of uh, AK Interactive paints that had... Uh, they're, they're just like, this is our Night Creatures set, or this is our Orc set. And that's probably like the easiest way to sell me on a style of paint to try out, because... Uh, I don't know, it's just the, the, the box art's cool, and I'm, I'm AK Interactive is a name that I trust. So uh, I decided to go with their Night Creatures Flesh Tones, and that's what I'm doing here just to make her look a little bit more corrupted, a little bit more sinister. And as you can see, I'm painting in just the features that are sticking out on her. She's got a tiny face, but we should be able to work with that with a decent pointed brush. You don't need the tiny brush that I have here. Uh, any kind of point will work. So while I was working in that magenta for the uh, first highlight. My final highlight was a mix of magenta and vampiric flesh, and that I worked up maybe a couple times. So now I'm trying to go for this, uh, like, I, it, I'm not going for the, the runny mascara look that she has. I didn't want her to look like they, they kind of sell her like this torn up and tattered person. I wanted her to look really evil and angry. So I kind of did this more super smoky eye look by thinning down some flesh tone or that, that vampiric flesh and uh, some of the black that I had on my palette with about two parts water or three parts water to one part paint. And this lets me get this like faded smoky look to it. I think I've done a pretty decent job of doing it. Uh, it's not supposed to be super duper clean, so don't worry too much about it. And now since I've finished that part, I'm taking some of that pure vampiric flesh color, and I'm just going to dot her eyes. Uh, the eyes on this model are not super duper easy to paint, so I wouldn't try and uh, like break yourself working on it. You can see here I'm going back and forth because I kind of mispainted one of the eyes. And uh, I'm just going to do my best to try and get two little dots on there. And the, for the final part, I decided to give her some lipstick so her lips just didn't look like nothing but pink. So I took some dirty red mixed with the uh, vampiric flesh and put that on for uh, a little bit of pop to her face that wasn't just pink everywhere. And then finally, I took some of the, uh, the smoky black color that I had and just drew a line in between her lips to show a little bit of definition. Chances are people aren't going to notice this while they're playing against them, but I think it's fun to at least see the face come alive while you're painting. For this part, we're going to start working on her hair, and I've decided to kind of go away from the super comical bright red hair that she has in her artwork. So I've started out with a mix of Reaper's Charred Brown and Reaper's Clotted Red. These are probably two of my favorite colors to start off uh, your typical red hair with. Or not, I guess not typical red hair, but this is just a type of red hair. So we're just going to be lining that through. And I'm sorry I got out of frame here. Some of those angles got a little bit screwy and uh, I wasn't very cognizant of where the model was actually positioned. But uh, we're just gonna go through and cover this. The, the Reaper line, the Reaper Master Series line is just super great. This stuff has tons of pigment in it and you can thin it down to where it's almost like nothing and it will still like have the pigment drifting through the way you want it to. I think that Reapers are a really underrated type of paint that some people just consider to be uh, the types of paint you would use to paint D&D models, but I really think that it has a lot of cool properties that make it a unique paint set uh, to pick up.
Now we'll start highlighting with just straight clotted red and both of these the the mix of clotted red and charred brown and then the clotted red itself those are just one to one uh paint to uh, water ratio and the the model here is really well sculpted in terms of getting the hair down i don't have to force any of the uh strands of hair for highlights there's a lot of nice sculpted lines here that I can utilize to show some definition in her hair and maybe kind of capitalize on a little bit of the movement that it's got by having some of these shadows left over and uh, the transition between the, the the clotted red and then the mix is really smooth here. I think uh, in the Barnabas painting video I kind of talked about the, the trick to painting red is just to try and build up from these small variations of red since it's gonna uh, cure or dry translucent anyways uh, because of the way red pigmentation works it's just going to uh, make it look really smooth for you next up we're grabbing some of that dirty red from uh, AK interactive that we used on her lips and we're going to mix that in with the clotted red to start doing some highlights only in the areas where the hair is going to be bending and showing a lot of that light. I know that this isn't normally how real hair would work, but with this model there's a lot of cool like whips and curves, so I want to try and uh, show that through the highlights. And then finally we'll come in with just a very small amount of that dirty red. I don't want to go super crazy bright red here. You can see me kind of wiping some of that off since it felt like it was a little too strong. But this is just getting highlighted in very choice places. So now we've got to start working on the cloth pattern for Fiora. And uh, to start off, I, I like uh, Vallejo Game Colors line and their bluish whites. Uh, they cover really well because they've got such strong pigmentation. Uh, you can already see it going over black here. It's it's doing quite well. This is a mix between uh, shadow gray and wolf gray from Vallejo Game Color. Now with this, we're going to have to do a couple passes, uh, even if it is super duper strong. But this is about one to one water to paint. It's not extremely diluted, and I kind of wanted it to. I didn't want to dilute it too much just to try and save myself some time with painting white over black it's not always the easiest thing in the world and just like uh just like painting black uh you, you as i'd stated earlier you don't want to end up just having uh, a variation of a, a, a super dark blue or something like that by taking your highlights too far and with white it's almost I feel like it's kind of the opposite. You have to pick some kind of other color to start your base with because you don't, like when you paint something just pure white, it's just not going to look right. So you have to choose whether you want to tilt your white towards a warmer spectrum or a cooler spectrum. And I definitely like the cooler spectrum, especially for this model. It's gonna mix well with a lot of the things that we have going on and make some of the parts of her that I want to stand out, stand out really well. So I've decided to go towards this bluish gray with white. Now after a few coats, we've got a pretty nice strong uh, bluish gray here. And now we're gonna come in with just straight wolf gray. And this is just going to get painted in high, like small highlights, more like layers. I'm not trying to do super uh, intense transitions here. The, since I've worked the other color, the, the color that was darker or the base coat, I guess, had this color in it. It makes layering a little bit easier. Uh, this is, again, probably a one-to-one -one mix of paint to water or whatever you thin with. And we're just kind of going around the uh, the sweeps of her uh, cloth. There's a couple torn parts up in the top here that I'll highlight just to kind of show those off a little bit. But uh, really just kind of following the curves of the cloak or dress or whatever it is she's wearing. And making sure we get uh, those highlights in, but not making making sure that they are not too strong. I don't want to pass over these a bunch of times, enough to where I show a ton of separation between the color that I put underneath it and the one that I'm highlighting with here. That's why you kind of see me wiping off the brush on the bottle that I'm using to hold her, is that I don't want the this color to come on a little, I don't want it to come on too strong, because then it will just kind of ruin my transitions.
At this point, I'm going to be using just a, a, a little bit more on some of the higher points of the model. I think this will help me transition better to the super bright white. So we're kind of like painting a little bit less of the model as we go on. That's kind of a trick to doing these like fast and dirty layers is just by uh, not making sure the one layer that you put on is solid, but kind of putting a variation of the opacity of the paint as you're putting those highlights on. You can see as I'm painting, I'm painting less and less of what I had done previously. And I think at this point I've decided to mix in the uh, Vallejo white foundation to try and bring up some more of these highlights. And these are going to be ones that I don't do a ton of. I don't want the model to register as too much white in this uh, dress. So I want to be really subtle and really careful with how much of this mix that I put on. And we're just kind of tracing in the same way that we had done uh, previously with less and less area covered with the wolf gray. We're just covering a little bit less with each, uh, each little bit we put on with the uh, mix of white and wolf gray. This will be the final highlight of just pure white foundation. This will give us those crisp highlights and help the dress register as white with not without without losing too much uh, of the dynamic look with all these uh, different shades and shadows and stuff that we've got going along the, the cloth. Moving on to a detail that I'm not particularly fond of, it's the little tear in her dress that exposes her leg in this little garter belt thing that she's wearing. I am painting it in just so that I can break up the bottom part of this model a little bit with the skin tone. I think if I put too much, or if I did all the white over here or extended the leg armor up, it just wouldn't have enough like variation in colors in there, so I decided to make the concession to do this. So I'm just going back over with the uh, same colors that I had painted her face with, but this time I'm going to be covering a lot less of the area, or leaving a lot less of the area open for some of those dark tones. The face, we left a lot of the, uh, the, the pink and purple mix. Uh, in there just to kind of help show more definition of the face. I don't need a ton of definition in the shadows of her leg here, so we're going pretty bright on the highlights to make her at least look not like a Muppet uh, leg that's sticking out, but um, just enough to uh, show that it's there. Next up, we're going to be preparing for the next step on the little like flaming chainsaw sword that she's got. And to do that, I'm taking that uh, foundation white from Vallejo model color, and uh, I'm just covering the flames on the chainsaw. I'm trying to be mindful of the black that's hanging out there. And the reason why I've decided to do this is because we're going to use, uh, from Scale75's FX line, we're using Red Ecstasy to kind of paint the color of the flames here. This is the, the flame color for the rest of my Infernal's army, so that's the the like color I wanted these magical flames to be that are coming off of her uh, her chainsaw. So in order to paint this stuff, you're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble by just use, painting something, painting the thing you're trying to get this color on white first. It's a very weak pigment. It's super bright if you do it over white, but it's not going to cover anything really well. So that's why I've decided to start with this base tone. Once I've got the bulk of the ecstasy color on there. I'm going to go around and put maybe a, a mix of, uh, it's it's like two to one uh, red ecstasy with black. And that's just to kind of get this like carbony flamey look that comes off the tips of the flames. And uh, while I'm at it, you or while you're at it, you can take a mix of like white and uh, the red ecstasy to try and fill the gap between or feel the transition between the white and uh, red ecstasy that you've put on there. As you can see, it's kind of a little harsh. So I'm trying to smooth that out by just adding that mix in between to create a decent transition. Normally I'd do this through an airbrush, but here I just figured I'd paint it on. 
now we get to go through and lay down all the, uh, I don't know, the stitching or embroidery that's on Fiora's cloak. And to start this out, the, the color that I would typically reach for is uh, Snakebite Leather from Vallejo Game Color. It's probably one of my favorite colors to start off any kind of non-metallic gold or something that I want to register as metallic-ish with uh, cloth. But I didn't have any handy, and neither did my game store that I ran to. So in order to kind of cheat this color or mix it myself, I went for... Uh, Citadel base colors, and I picked up both Mornfang Brown and Averland Sunset. If you mix these two together, you can get a pretty good mimic for Snakebite Leather. And uh, we're just kind of going around with the tip of my brush on a lot of these parts to paint in the uh, the stitching that she has. And be a little bit more aggressive on the back part of the dress because that stuff is, there's a lot of sculpted detail back there and I need to make sure that paint gets into all the crevices of it so it doesn't look like partially painted or just kind of like haphazard so I'm able to keep this paint a little bit thinner and uh, kind of work the brush in a little bit more both ways when I'm working on the uh, the really uh, elegant parts of the front of this cloth that's where I like to keep my paint a little thicker, about uh, one part water to two parts paint, and that's going to give me some more control. You're going to have to go back to your palette quite a bit and maybe thin it down just a little bit if it isn't traveling off your brush very well, but I think that having it a little bit thicker for those just gives you more control so you're less likely to kind of overspill past these sculpted details, since sometimes when you get stuff like this, the... the, the amount that's raised up off the model isn't always enough to give you a nice clean paint line. You might end up uh, spilling over a bit, but with thicker paint, you're going to have less of that happen. So now I've decided to take the mix and put in a little bit more Averlin Sunset. I don't think I'm going full Averlin Sunset just yet, and we're going to be uh, just getting the tips of any kind of sculpted details, or more so leaving the recesses behind. For the embroidered parts, uh, I'm just really using the tip of the brush to uh, get the top of the sculpted detail. There's not a whole lot of depth that I can control with those like I can with the rest of the sculpted details that are on like the back of her dress or cloth or whatever it is. Uh, so we're just kind of going through and getting the tips of those just to show that this is where things are brighter. And on the back of the dress, I'm getting a lot more haphazard. The The details back here are pretty, are, they're well sculpted, but I really didn't want to take the time to individually highlight every single swirl in that filigree pattern that's on the back of this. So I've just kind of done more of a, a layering highlight in a lot of these. It's more so that I'm kind of just clipping it with the edge of my brush. It's almost like dirty edge highlighting and uh, I can come back and kind of fix that up a little bit to pull those details out a little bit more but right now I'm just not wanting to spend a ton of time dealing with the filigree on the back of the dress when it's not going to be something that I nor my opponent are going to be paying much attention to and now we've kind of gone full Averlin sunset based on the way that paintbrush looks though I think I might have mixed in a little bit more Morgast brown and that's another base color from uh, Citadel. So this gives, uh, yeah, based on that swipe there, I'm pretty sure I've mixed in some more gray, more gas brown at this point. This kind of gives you that, uh, like it registers as gold as it would on cloth, but it's not, you know, it's nowhere near clean enough to be considered metallic metal. This is really just me being quite haphazard with it because I know that the amount of time I would need to devote to highlight all this stuff is just going to be too much. So I'm being really, uh, really sloppy with the way these highlights are coming on. But it'll register quite nice and look good on the table. So to clean up the definition of some of this filigree, I've grabbed Seraphim Sepia wash from uh, Citadel. And this will just allow me to fill in the recesses on all this filigree on the back of the uh, cloth so that I can just show those details a little bit more. You could add an extra step and highlight those separately if you want to, but I'm not worried about it. So now I get to go with the pipes on her Warcaster armor. And to start this off, I'm going with straight 
uh, clotted red. This is about a one-to-one -one mix because I am going to be covering black with a, a red color, which is sometimes a little bit more difficult to do just because it is usually a weak pigment paint. But uh, that Reaper stuff can go pretty far. I think I only need to do one coat of this in order to get what I want out of it. So uh, just go around and I know some people will probably paint her without this piece on uh, based on how I'm kind of contorting the model to make things work for me. And I wouldn't like, I wouldn't say that's a bad idea. Just always, I always prefer to paint my models completely together, even if it is a little bit of a hassle. So now that I've got that base coat set, I've decided to come in with a mix of clotted red to uh, mephiston red. It's a base coat from, or base color from uh, Citadel as well. I really think these two reds, can, you can never go wrong with them. Like if you say you have a problem painting red, get clotted red and mephiston red, and I think you will not have issues with it anymore. These colors are just so... Uh, so they're, they're highly pigmented and go on just really smooth. You can already see that I've finished the highlight for that uh, clotted red mix. And now we're just going in with straight Methaston red and it's going on super easy in one quick easy coat and we'll register some nice bright red pipes in the back. Now finally we get to move on to the gold trim and uh, there we go, I'll fix that. I'm like, oh, I gotta put her in frame. But um, the first color that I'm starting with is uh, from Scale 75, and it's going to be Necrotic Gold. This is uh, like more of a greenish gold that I'm going with. I want to try and stay away from yellowy golds. I think uh, there's just, it, it looks a little too awkward for the way that I'm painting this army particularly. Uh, so I'm deciding to paint or kind of tilt the orange or not the orange, tilt the uh, gold a little bit more towards the green side instead of the orange side. It's more kind of abused and old and, and kind of antiqued. So we're just going over uh, all of the trim super easy. Uh, this The mix of this is probably one part paint one part water or whatever you're mixing with and I'm using the edge of my brush in a lot of these situations but these uh, the, the brushes in particular that I'm using here are the uh, broken toad mark two brushes they've got a nice long bristle on them and uh, allow you to get your trim done really easy if you're having issues with it Next up, I'm coming in with a highlight for the gold trim, and this is going to be from Scale 75 as well. It's called Elven Gold, and this one's definitely painted or pointed more towards that like yellowish green side instead of that really fantasy orange. So, uh, if you haven't, if you're having issues with metals at all, like you want to try and use the, you want to blend them together, have some nice tonal variation of your metals. I do really think that the Scale 75 metals that they make are some of the best that you can paint with. Uh, there's definitely some other great metals out there, but the thing about the Scale 75 metals is that they are really finely pigmented. You know, like sometimes you paint a metal and it looks like those, like, uh, bleach or the the benches from like a Denny's drive through or something they've got that speckled like glittery look to them but this has just got a really nice smooth metal look speaking of smooth metal looks another good metallic to pick up is anything from the Vallejo metal color line they kind of come in a bigger bottle and have like a black flip top this is their just it's called gold but it's a very super bright gold that kind of matches this uh yellowish green gold that I want and I'm really just touching the tips here to show some really high pointed highlights. Now finally I'm coming in with uh, well, I guess it's not finally it's just one of the things that's close to the end. It, we're just working on that little garter belt thing that she's wearing and uh, to kind of blend in a little bit more with the leg I've decided to go with 
uh, Scale 7 5's Brain Eater Azure, and uh, I'm highlighting then with a mix of Miskatonic Gray, and that's just going to give me this cool pale purple color that um, will... I'm not trying to make it stand out, but it at least shows that it's there. And then I'm coming in with... Uh, Scale 7 5's Heavy Metal. This is a really, it's not a, a super dark metal, but it is, a, or I'm sorry, it's this is black metal. It is a dark metal. So black metal is going to be the base for all of the little metallic parts that I'm doing, which is really just the pipes and one of the parts on the chainsaw. I think I get the handle of the chainsaw as well. And then the highlight that goes down with these is a one-to-one -one mix of black metal and heavy metal. And again, these metals are always done one-to-one -one water to uh, water to paint. Finally, for the model, I wasn't happy with the way the filigree looked. I wanted to bring some more definition to it, so I just dry brushed the back of the cloth with more gas to bone straight. And here's the model finished. You can kind of see as the light catches some of that black that we're registering a little bit of that teal. But the, the kind of goal of this model was just subtlety in a lot of the highlights. The white is registering quite nice, but showing the a little bit of variation in the shadows without being too over the top. I think sometimes people might not really appreciate the subtle highlights that you get from this, especially since most miniatures are meant to be pretty bombastic, and the metallics on here are quite well highlighted also. But I think that this works out quite well, and if you wanted more sharp highlights, the teal like progression that I've given, you can just increase the amount of the in's mouth uh, color and just have that be your highest highlight, and you'll you'll end up being set pretty well. 